Good evening. I'd like to call the regular scheduled select board meeting for the town of Berlin uh, to order. Today is Monday, June 20th, 2022. With us tonight are Flo Smith on my left, Carl Parton on my far left, Dave Sawyer on my right, Joe Staub on my far right, I'm Brad Town. With us also is Vince Conti, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? No, sir. Uh, public comment. This one you want me to come? It is. Good evening, Matthew Romei. Yeah. I'm here, uh, I'm actually a town resident, but I'm here for the fire department tonight. I uh, wanted to just provide a little bit of a, of a note about some activities that we've had going on. We've recently published, I'm sorry, not the people logged out. This is lovely. Uh, published our May call volume on the uh, uh, on our Facebook page. We answered 18 fire calls in the month of May, three of them being structure fires, one of them in the town of Berlin, one in East Montpelier, and one in Middlesex. Um, we had seven alarm activations, two outside fires, three wrecks, a service call, and we paid the fire department out twice the medical calls. Those are usually the severe ones, cardiac arrest, major things like that. We um, logged 52 and a half hours, personal hours on fire calls uh, alone, and 112 training hours uh, for you know, body in the month. Fast Squad also answered 69 calls, and I'm not able to quite drill down yet with numbers to tell you how many person hours those calls amounted to, but uh, the call times themselves were about 12 and a half hours um, just on calls. But some of those calls could have had three or four people in them, which would uh, dramatically increase those call times. Um, we have, we are working our way through um, an ISO review, which happens every five or ten years, depending on what's going on. This review was actually completed, with the survey was done a couple of years ago, but COVID. Um, so we're, we're working on getting some of that uh, data fixed up. Um, we're hoping not to go down a, a grade, quite frankly. Um, we were not the only regional department that was set to drop a grade, but we have a year to uh, turn some of those things around. Our biggest hits come in apparatus and personnel uh, when we start looking at it. We actually got great scores in our water, uh, our water service. So that was um, a, a, a good reflection on the town. That's very little of that in the fire department. So. Um, one thing we are steering, um, I mean, it's like a train coming down the tracks is we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to look at a new ladder truck very soon. Um, it's quite old and we look around the town and see hospital, nursing home, nursing home, nursing home, mall, airport, commercial, ISO, that becomes much more valuable in the ISO records. And I'm sorry if I skipped over this, ISO is who sets your insurance rates. So your fire protection category, if, it, if you, if we, I forget what the number is, but if we drop a grade, uh, when you look at a building like uh, Blue Cross or one of the bigger buildings, big bucks uh, when it comes to uh, paying for your insurance and stuff. Uh, the other thing I would ask is this, uh, is this kind of report beneficial to you on a periodic basis? Do you want to see us? Uh, by the way, the chief sends his regards. He's tied up with the other duties tonight. So I have to follow in the sword for him. But if this is beneficial to you, um, you know, we'll keep coming back and seeing you whenever you want us to. Well, I would think it'd be beneficial. I find it beneficial. To, one of the things I was wondering when you say the ISO uh, scale, um, would there be any way to approach businesses that would uh, drop or have more have to pay more insurance to help fund some of the fire department's activities? It is possible. Uh, oftentimes, that comes in. Um, I'm, I'm about to speak out of my pay grade for a minute, but oftentimes that comes at like the DRB process. You say, oh, hey, you're going to put this 17 story building in, we're going to need some help. Um, you know, 
making the protection work for that. Um, it's not just the fire department that looks at that. It's, you know, all town services should, look, should sort of look at that that way. But, you know, we're, um, our fleet's aging and uh, just, just coming over here tonight, I was listening to a report that's talking about electric fire trucks. They just actually deployed the first all electric fire truck in LA at Rosenbauer and they broke it in about a week. But um, that will, uh, somewhere along the lines of triple the cost of a piece of fire apparatus. So that will take your half a million dollar engine, which is a very nice engine, you get a very nice fire truck for half a million dollars, and turn that into a 1.5. You know, an aerial device right now, new off the line, which by the way, if you swipe the credit card for it today, is three years away, um, is in the 1.2, 1.3 category. Um, we're looking at some apparatus out there right now, but it'll be, they will be 10 year trucks. So, you know, we'll look at something that it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be something to get us through the next, 10 years until we get a really good capital replacement plan in place. But the other big thing that's always going to hamper us is manpower. Um, you know, it's hard to find a substantially staffed fire department from a town of 2,900. And being an all volunteer service, we only count, so um, we count one third of what a full time in the station firefighter counts. So when they do their calculations, uh, we have to have three volunteers for every one career person to make the same benefit in the calculations. Well, that's a big sandwich to chew on. I'm sorry, I got a little off track there. Any questions for me? Good information. Concerns, worries? I'd like to uh, thank you and the volunteers, that volunteer first responders here in town. That's a spectacular job you do. And the report you gave was very interesting, I think, uh, you know, maybe for the sake of time, so you don't have to take a day to be here, or even just a, uh, a quick email to Vince uh, with, with the same information you gave us that we could compare against previous months and previous years. That would be very interesting for us to I hope as make we, decisions. I hope as we get there, we can start getting some linear comparisons. We can go back and do some of that now. It just it, it takes a little time to get it, uh, get, get it cut loose. Um, I know the fast squad is always a, a point of conversation. We did get communication um, this month that on at least two of the calls in the month of May, Berlin fast squad was the difference in life and death in the town. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that came from our, our transport agencies. That came from our ambulance services, you know, giving us that feedback. And, you know, that makes it worth it. But, All right. Any other questions for Ms. Romeo? That's all you got. I'll be sitting back here. Yep. All right. Thank you. With your Thank you for Thank the report. You. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, CD runners, special event permit. Robert Evans. Yeah, it doesn't look like they joined, uh, but it's, this is uh, the same that they uh, they run every year, Brad. The, the application is in there. I have their certificate of insurance as well. It's a five mile race around the pond. They're estimating maybe around 75 people for the event at the, at the high end. Um, it's from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Uh, in the middle of August. Uh, they're going to have uh, volunteers for uh, parking and around the, the pond to monitor traffic as well. Uh, and they'll have a registration table out here. Okay. Uh, no problems with the in previous years. No, there's been no issue with this event. I make a motion to approve the special event amusement permit application as presented by Vince Conti and is outlined in the paperwork presented to us. And it's specifically on August 18th and they'll have a start and finish at the Brookfield Road. I'll second that motion. Is there any leeway there for a review of the police and the fire? They didn't fill that out and you should take it. Uh, maybe it's conditional on on having that uh, done. Mm -hmm. I would like to include that conditional as presented by Brad regarding the police and fire as well. Thank you, Brad. Second that. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 
Uh, charter change review and discussion to proceed, Vince? Yep, in your packet, you'll find a copy of the charter. And in that charter, you'll see the changes uh, highlighted in uh, red uh, that, were, that have been proposed. Um, if they're in red with no strike through, they're the additions. And if there's a strike through, they're being removed from that location. So it's pretty straightforward. I think there's uh, three in general. Uh, one has to do with the local options tax, and that's on uh, page two, paragraph D in red. Uh, do you want me to, to uh, read those changes or? I think so, because we've got okay. people in the audience here. Okay, so uh, it says upon resolution of the select board or upon receipt of a petition signed by 5% of the registered voters of the town at an annual or special meeting warned for that purpose, the voters of the town may vote by a majority of those present in voting to assess any or all of the following. A 1% sales tax, a 1% rooms tax, and a 1% meals and alcohol beverage tax. Paragraph D2, a tax imposed under the authority of this section shall be collected and administered by the Department of Taxes in, the, in accordance with 24 VSA section 138. Then D3, revenues received through the imposition of a tax imposed under this section so shall be designated for capital projects within the town. That's the first change. And then in uh, subchapter four, under town officers, uh, under elected officers, item two, uh, there's a strike through for the town clerk for a three year uh, term as a, as a deletion. And then in section uh, four dash four, appointed officers, on page five, there's the addition of the town clerk there as an appointed officer. Then on page seven, uh, under section seven three, penalty for delinquent installments, we're adding and personal property inventory taxation. And then paragraph C, that's defined as when the total assessed value of personal property or inventory taxation is equal to or less than $1,650, the town treasurer may, after approval of the select board, waive the personal property inventory taxation. Did you want to say anything I to that, Diane? That one. Yeah. What it is, is that these bills are under $5 and under. I have 46 tax bills that are under $5, and the majority were under a dollar. And it takes me a long time to collect that money because people just ignore it. And so all I'm saying is, you know, you're looking at a total of all 46 of them, like $250 total. Not even that, like 215 But I spend a lot more time on that in stamps and trying to collect them. And so all I'm saying is if we can go with that, um, then it's, you know, it's $215. However, we are spending more than that when we can't afford them. So that's what I'm saying. That's the only way that we can waive um, anything that's under that. And the way I understand it is, is that you can waive up to sixteen hundred and fifty dollars. But six, no, not no the tax the taxable amount because you have to divide that by a hundred. Oh, okay. And so then we tax divide that by our tax rate is like five dollars the whole okay. yeah All right. the whole year or less. And right. I have tons of them that are under a dollar, under forty six. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Just, I but we have to have it in the charter, or I should bill absolutely everybody that gets personal property. Okay. So just as a note for the board as well, um, if we proceed with the charter change, the administrative code will have to be updated to reflect those changes as well with regards to the town clerk position. It's just an administrative action for the administrative code that would need to be done. Okay. Any discussion on this? No, I have a quick comment on page Roman numeral two uh, and subsection D uh, by the by a majority of those present and voting uh, it may be understood but does that language have to be changed for mail-in or, or absentee voting those can we just get rid of present those voting
Or is that present in the uh, house? Well, it says present in voting, so mm -hmm. voting would be include your uh, mailings, too. Well, okay. I take it as it's a floor vote. That's because that's, it is a, that's, well, that's it my is concern. It. So, uh, what type of what type of vote will it be, and where will it be held, and who can participate in the vote? So that particular phrase is uh, in question. I, I think it's because it isn't a budgetary item. It has to be on the floor vote. Yeah, and, and again, it's referring to a special meeting. But to get the ultimate clarification, I will consult with our town attorney and VLCT on the language okay. to make sure it's uh, appropriate. Any other comments on this? Can I ask a question? Sure. Thank you. Um, I'm Margaret Monley, a Justice of the Peace here in Berlin. Um, so are you voting today to change the town clerk position to an appointed position versus an elected position? Or does that go to like town meeting and the people vote? Well, it has to be voted on by the, by the town. Okay. So that change, you guys don't have the power to make. No, all we're going to do is we're trying to think what we're going to put in front of the voters. Right, this. right. Okay, that makes sense. And the, the local options tax, of course, that we, we're hoping to use that to fund the capital budget. Uh, on the local options tax, um, I believe the research says it's what half a million dollars additional revenue. We'll come to some of that if there's a there's a presentation okay. there as well on the local options tax so, as well. Talks about some and I don't know if Tim's gonna be here, but we have a truck that's <laughs> retire <laughs> trying to retire early and a few other things. The payloader's getting mm -hmm. you know, we've had that for a long time. When you take and add all those up, um, you know, it's a big chunk of money. This is just a way to get people from outside of town. Okay. to help pay for this because they're enjoying our roads and mm -hmm. services. Yes. Um, so on the um, change for appointing a town clerk. Yes. So does then when it's, when it's time for a clerk to be appointed, is it does the town recruit? And not just like I come in and say I want to be town clerk. Yeah. Like we do now. It's yes. going to change and it, the town will yeah, the the one of the advantages of uh, of having a uh, appointment is they no longer need to be a town resident, mm -hmm. and that gives you a bigger pool of people to choose from. Any other questions on this? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm wondering if you could each please state for the record why you would like to see it go to appointed from elected, and to the point that you just made as far as it makes a bigger pool because it can go outside of the town. I'd like to point out that it's been several months that you've been looking for an assistant town treasurer and you do have that advantage and it doesn't seem to have helped. I believe there is a interview tomorrow. Right, but it's been several months and there isn't one yet, unfortunately. Well, so just having a bigger pool does not mean you necessarily get all kinds of people but I would love to hear from each of you as far as what what you believe the advantage is well with the as far as not getting applications for the assistant treasurer's position we have had several um, the it's kind of a unique employment thing right now and it's hard to I, I can't describe it. I mean, Tim was telling me today that, you know, towns all around us, Middlesex has one man on their road crew now, and they cannot find other people wow. to work. And it's just Barry City, Montpelier City, Barry Town, Roxbury, everybody's looking for help. And, yeah, and it's just not, it's just not coming in. Uh, let's see here. Um, well, like I said, if, if it wasn't for this time of history, I think that uh, you would find there'd be a lot of people interested in the town clerk's position. Or, and uh, I, I just think we need a, to 
get the apps, get people that have the absolute best abilities for the town. But, well, I like the fact of it not necessarily just being Berlin uh, residents. And I didn't realize that until just recently when I was reading some communications and talking with folks. And I almost didn't think that that was true. Um, but the more that I've given it consideration and talked with people, I think that piggybacking on what you just said, Brad, it opens up the ability for more people to apply in a bigger pool. Not necessarily to say that we wouldn't hire someone from Berlin, just we had that option to look at everyone who's interested. So I would say that's my answer to your question. Carol? Oh, well, I guess uh, I could be convinced about elected or appointed being positive. They both have positives and negatives. We certainly in this nation have seen that sometimes we get a choice of candidates that we don't like either one of those candidates and we're surprised that, that that's all we get. An election is a popularity contest with no filter for qualifications, whereas an appointed person would have to go through a personal process. They'd have to probably uh, be filtered through a hiring committee. Uh, their qualifications would be scrutinized and uh, you know, we'd be certain that the person that was put in place as the town clerk uh, was uh, qualified and the best person that applied for the job. Joe? Um, I, I, could go, I could go either way. I see it um, in a positive both, both ways. I think it's, I think it's nice to know um, the person in the office as being a local person you can relate to and have that communication and, and deal with, you know, business dealings with. Um, but going back to having uh, more of a pool of, of candidates, I can see that as being a positive as well. So. I, I would have to Pretty much the same answer that's been said. I think that uh, being being appointed, if there was an oversight hiring person, uh, you know, committee or whatever for that that position, we'd have a pool of individuals that are best qualified. Other than being uh, again a popularity contest or, 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 or something that somebody put their name on the election got elected <coughs> simply because maybe who they were or who who knows them. Uh, and maybe not uh, uh, be the best fit for it. Uh, I, I myself would lean more to uh, want to have a select, a selective, uh, uh, a committee to select an individual that best fits within that to do that. Uh, uh, any other question? Well, I'd also like to share something. I misspoke in something that I said, and I will be rectifying that to the best of my ability, but I'm not sure if you're aware, I wasn't aware, that even if you were appointing a town clerk, it still would be the town clerk who would appoint the assistant clerk. That is from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, some mm -hmm. questions and answers that they had just stayed by the way. That's how it works, apparently. Any other comment? Yeah, go. So I believe it was page three when they talk about the revenues being used um, shall be designated for the capital for capital projects for the town. Um, I think at one point we were talking about you know the emergency services being that uh, the PD has a very large um, budget. Um, as well as the, the town through the road crew. Um, so if it was capital projects, that also in, incorporates the police department as well. But is there anything in the police department that it wouldn't cover? That it wouldn't cover? That it wouldn't cover. You know, well, like salaries. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but usually capital improvement is uh, is a is a physical right. the infrastructure. Yeah. Well, these vehicles I think would be 
consider capital yeah. and the radios and the equipment that they need. And that is very expensive. Okay. And they need to have, obviously, the latest in technology. Yes, sir. Is the local options tax something that's going to be voted on? Question one. Question two. It's my understanding, is it not, that if we do a 1% local options tax, that the state of Vermont keeps half of it, and we get half? Okay, no, they don't. There's two ways of doing it, okay? Can, can, I, just, can I just say we're going to come to that? Okay. 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 Local okay. options tax is specifically on the agenda to talk about numbers right. and how it works. Okay. okay. Right? So, okay. anything else on this? Okay. Um, I have a motion on... Uh, your chatter change review and decision. We're to proceed. I make the motion to proceed with the charter changes as presented tonight with the added information that Vince will obtain and just a few grammatical things that I can share with Vince. They're nothing major, some periods and just overall grammatical. And also maybe something to indicate about what we talked about about having to be on the floor vote if that's necessary. Yeah, I'll, get, I'll certainly get clarity on that verbiage. Excellent. I have a second vote motion. Oh. Could I ask another question? As yeah, far as when you're planning on putting this out to vote, is it going to be several votes as far as like the local option tax would not be under the same thing as the others so they each get their own vote? I would think, because I mean, the, the way it's one designed, guy, the way it's designed, as I understand it, and recommended from the leagues of cities and towns, in the verbiage that's in the charter change, each item would have its own line to vote on. So there'd be one for the local options tax, there'd be one for the town clerk change, and there'd be one for the taxation change as well. For each to vote on. That's the way I would presume that it would be. Any other comments on this? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. So Vince, you've got some work to do. <laughs> Thank um, you very much. Personnel policy update. Okay, again in your package you have a similar, I didn't give you the whole personnel policy, um, just the page that had the change on it, on page six under section 201. Um, and again, this came about from a discussion with the leagues and cities and towns for the board's recommendation to start a review with them with regards to our personnel policy. Um, so they gave me the recommendation. I'll, I'll read off what that change is. And the entire policy with this in this draft, including this, has been sent to them for a complete review from the leagues of cities and towns. And I should have a response from them uh, sometime in the next two weeks. So once I have that, I will bring the whole policy back to the board for review of their comments as well. Um, so this one reads, basically, it's, it's nepotism. But, and again, this statement is directly with what uh, the Leagues of Cities and Towns has recommended. The Town of Berlin, in recognition of the potential for a conflict of interest to occur in the workplace, prohibits the hiring of transferring of relatives when doing so will result in a close relative supervising or evaluating another close relative or a close relative supervising or evaluating the immediate supervision of another close relative. And then it goes on to say a close relative includes a spouse, civil union partner, romantic cohabitant, parent, step parent, grandchild, child, stepchild, grandchild, sibling, aunt or uncle, niece or nephew, parent in law, and sibling in law. That's the extent of the change uh, that they recommended. I'm sorry, but who recommended that? The Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns. Okay, any, uh, what's your emotion on this? I'd make a motion to go farther with this uh, personnel changes and personal policies. Second. All of that. Any further discussion? Would that cover something like when Bethany was doing minutes for the board for several years? Would that not be a possibility anymore? Well, be honest, she was a contractor. She was not a hire. She was an employee. 
she put in a uh, thing on an RFP was no bid, and that's how she got her job or whatever you want to call it here at the town, doing minutes. I was just wondering how far it goes as far as it's a it's a small town. Well, the, thing, the other thing here is is that it uh, the nepotism clause is pretty specific in saying that uh, supervisory uh, abilities over the uh, relative and that is There's, there's, there's nothing would keep a relative working here in the office from having a relative working out in the, in the road crew. And the other thing is, of course, is that, uh, um, you know, the ability to supervise someone goes away when most of your um, work sheet or, or Supervision should go through either the immediate supervisor or Vince. And okay. of note, the clerk's office is not covered by the personnel policy. That's true. At, at the way it's set up today, I believe if it was to go to a higher position or appointed position by the town, I think that position would be covered under the statute. Under the statute under or this, the policy? Under this policy. <coughs> well, I'm not sure because it does say that it would still be the clerk who would appoint. You are correct, but I think that the clerk would have to abide by the policies of the town at that point. That's just my opinion. Let our lawyer earn some money. Yeah. Yeah. He, is, uh, he is reviewing it. Uh, the leagues and cities and towns have also provided, along with that, a document that, because they're, they're seeing this more and more throughout the state that they're recommending. Um, th there's, a, there's a form there that they actually are now, some towns are starting to use that for elected positions that still remain, like the clerk, they're having him sign that form as part of a condition of employment to accept also and include them in the town benefits, that they will abide by the personnel policy if they want to receive town benefits. And that's, the, again, I have that form that's directly from VLCT as well. It's something that they are implementing across the state with the towns that they, they uh, that are members. Is, is there going to be any, any, any pushback with uh, town insurance through VLTC? If these policies aren't followed, um, I don't know the answer to that yet. I haven't had any feedback from them with regards to that. The question is out there, though. Um, what what type of impact will it have uh, through them? I, I, we don't have anything back from uh, Passive or VLCT on that yet. Any other question on, on the immediate supervision? So. Um, I'm appointed. Right. And I follow I am following under So the who do you answer to directly? I answer to Vince directly. Vince directly. Yeah. So let's say you did an assistant treasurer mm -hmm. and Vince's daughter. I don't know if you have a daughter. A couple of them. Okay. <laughs> Apply for it. Mm -hmm. And you would supervise her because you would be the immediate? Yes. And okay. As right. long as as long as I don't have any direct right. supervision or evaluation of that person, if she's doing it, that would okay. that right. would be fine. Because that person would have to come to me, and then if there's any issues, I would go to Vince. It, it's kind of like let me just make the um, like Tom for instance. If there's an issue, Tom doesn't come directly to me. He's supposed to go to Vince. Vince comes to me. So all I'm saying is just the same type of thing. Right. You know, I'm not related to Tom, but it doesn't matter. There's a certain way, yeah. a certain process, right? Follow that process. If I am appointed, I do have the insurance from the town and I do follow up all under the category. I was pretty sure I just wanted to mm -hmm. touch base about immediate supervision. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else on this? Your motion? So it's the motion. Oh, yeah. Second. Yeah. Second. Mm -hmm. Discussion. Yep. <laughs> it's all right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, local option tax review vets. Yes. Now we can talk numbers. <laughs> so the, the latest numbers that I were able to pull are from the state with regards to the local option tax. Um, so it's it's 70% of 1% that we get. So for 20, let me get the right uh, number here. $2021, that would equate to about $558,000 for us after the state takes their cut. Do they have any pre numbers? That pre numbers? Pre-COVID numbers, I could go back and there actually are some in the report that I, well, no, they're not any. Um, they do have some Sorry, numbers that we could go back. And those numbers seem to be pretty constant. Um, years ago, uh, um, Jeremy Hansen was uh, investigating this, and he came up with it came up again about a half a million dollars. To the tax. So, on that, I can give you some figures. In, in 2019, um, in fiscal year 2019, it would have been five hundred and ten thousand nine hundred and eleven dollars for the town of Berlin. In fiscal year 18, it would have been 491,772. Fiscal year 17, it would have been 485,252. I go back to 16 if you wanted, but those are the numbers that it would have it would have yeah. been if we had elected it. And it, it's easier to put that money into a, into the capital budget because the money is not guaranteed the same every year as you saw. It just, just to be clear, that is just for the 1% sales tax. It doesn't include meals and rooms or any of the others. It's yeah. just, just on the sales portion of it. Yes, sir. Um, so would the wording be capital expenditures? So we're talking about machinery. Are we, you know, perhaps let's say we want to build a new town garage, we want to buy a new fire truck, all that kind of stuff would it be included? Because man, it sounds like they need a fire truck and we need a <laughs> town garage. and. This, this would be a huge help to the town, but uh, thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Anything else, Vince? And let's just want some more information on the local options tax. I mean, it's... Uh, Do you know, uh, can you tell us what the, uh, the monies be from rooms and meals would be? Uh, I can't tell you today's numbers, but I can tell you 19, 18, and 17 years. In fiscal year 19, from the meals and rooms and alcohol, it would have been 138,868. Uh, fiscal year 18 would have been 66,238. And from fiscal year 17, it would have been $59,782. And Vince, both Barry and Montpelier uh, have this local option tax, don't they? They do now. They do now. And many towns yeah, actually, now throughout the, Vermont as well? The, the, yeah, I can tell you the list that have the 1% the sales and options tax around the state right now are Brandon, Brattleboro, Burlington, Colchester, Dover, Killington, Manchester, Middlebury, Rutland Town, St. Albans City, St. Albans Town, South Burlington, Stratton, Williston, Wilmington, Winhall, and Winooski. Yes, sir. I believe the Montpelier options tax is only on the uh, rooms and meals. I, 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 just coming to that, okay. you're, you're right. So for the just the meals and rooms as well, is Brandon, again, uh, Brattleboro, City of Barry, Colchester, Dover, Hartford, Killington, Manchester, Middlebury, Montpelier, Rutland Town, St. Albans City and Town, South Burlington, Stowe, Stratton, Williston, Wilmington, Winhall, Winooski, and Woodstock. And again, I, I have a presentation that I'd be happy to share with anybody if they if they so desire that talks a little bit more about it and give some numbers. It sounded like a Johnny Cash song, first of all. I've been to Wilmington. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so obviously, everybody has had this conversation that has uh, ha added this tax. Uh, so there are there must be some negative impacts. Uh, my question would be, how do local business owners that are going to be directly impacted by it feel? Um, we've got empty spaces in the mall, the, the old Staples building. Uh, so we have potential retail space that's not being utilized now. Will this contribute to them staying empty? I guess is my question. And uh, 
Um, is there any record of negative impact uh, in Barry or Montpelier after they have added this tax? I guess those are my those are the questions that I'm sure somebody who's really looked into this deeper than, than I have might have the answers to. I don't know who to direct them to even. <laughs> I won't throw it on your lap. I, I can reach out and I can I can talk with each of the uh, each of the town managers in, in both Montpelier and, and Barry and uh, and see uh, what they have to say, and right? Before, How the business is, you know, responded and so on. I know this is one of the issues that was being discussed before I became elected, and I tried to reach out to a couple of businesses that uh, I, I did business with, you know, and they didn't really, those particular individuals didn't really have a feeling either way, but I don't know if there would be a way to, to get that input from local business owners, the mall owner, or Retailers and like reach out to a few of them as well if you like some of the local uh, businesses and uh, I also think the Regional Planning Commission has some information on that as well. They've done some uh, some research and I can see what they have Okay. Well, just as an observation on that though, uh, Williston has the uh, sales tax and they have a new fire station mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nicest one in the state What's that? <laughs> in my capacity solely as a taxpayer and resident of the town of Berlin, not representing the fire department in any way. Um, yeah, Williston's fire station is really nice. They also just hired nine new firefighters, um, comma. However, what, at least my personal observation, the thing that, the thing that runs businesses out of Montpelier is property taxes. And, you know, the things that burden businesses less in Berlin is property taxes. I don't think that the sales tax, bills and rents, those are pass on taxes. And when you look at the interstate, the last time that you pass a gas station you can see from the exit is exit four. And the first gas station you can see from the exit going north of here is 11, I think. Maybe, maybe Waterbury. But, but this is what's utilizing city services for those that aren't paying property taxes, like for the rest of us. So. The only other thing I'd like to add kind of follows up on the question that you had asked earlier as well. That Out of that 30% that the state keeps, we still get some of that money back because that funds the state's pilot program, which is payment in lieu of taxes. For the state buildings that they have in various towns, that money is pooled from all the towns that have that local options tax to pay a portion of what their their taxes would be if they were in a state organization. So we even get some of that 30% back based on the number of, the formula that they use to calculate that pilot payment for each town. And the financing, as I understand it, happens all through the state. It wouldn't fall on Diane. Correct, Shoulders. the accounting and, and, no. the, and that Although is. Although I, I believe there's an option that the town could do it themselves and, and have all the money. That's, yeah, because Jeremy looked into that. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's did, did that change though? Did the statutes change on that? Though? Yeah, I, I couldn't find sure. that in the statutes anymore. I think that may have changed because I think, yeah. again, the state like wants that pool ago, to pay pilot tax with. Yeah. Well, the state's got to get their cut. Yeah. Um, but we get some of that back as well. Uh, any other discussion on the local options tax? Yes, sir. I got one last quick point, and that is if I were talking to a business owner or somebody out there and saying, look, we want to charge your customers 1% more, here are the benefits. We're going to replace a 17-year-old fire truck. We're going to replace a 52-year-old. You, know, you know, not just like, hey, can you pay us more money, but show them the benefits. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a seat. I think there's a chair there are two chairs right here if you want one. <laughs> Uh, any, any other discussion on this? Entertain a motion. I make the motion to move forward with the lo local option tax as reviewed um, with a decision to proceed. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Highway crew retention incentive discussion. Is Tim here? He's not here. No. But um, basically, uh, 
quick summary. We had a we had a highway crew person uh, elect to leave. Uh, that's been here for uh, eight plus years. Uh, no, probably about six. Six six years. Um, and the bottom line was he got a few dollars more in neighboring town. They offered it to him and he took it. Um, every town around us, again, it's 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 everywhere. The crunch to hire highway crew people, uh, people in general, uh, as we all know. Um, Middlesex, for example, I think it was a four-man crew. They're down to one. They're looking for three. Callis is looking for one. Northfield is still looking for one. Um, Barry City, I think, is looking for two. Barry Town is looking for two. Um, so everybody around us um, are, are looking for people, um, and it's just it's it was similar not long ago with the police force as well. They're just picking off people and swapping around and um, all for the all for the dollar. Um, We've done some some surveys and uh, some costs with the leagues of cities and towns using their their data, data from their statewide surveys on on pay as well. Um, with the fiscal year budget that we put in place, we're very close. Um, there's still a couple of positions, uh, one of them in particular on the highway crew that is uh, still well below the uh, state average um, for that role. Uh, so uh, we thought um, we thought we would would proposed to the town and uh, uh, some sort of retention incentive to offset the disparity um, in the next fiscal budget year um, and then uh, propose a new budget obviously the next year to get everybody up to uh, the average level uh, that kind of matches the state and hopefully hang on to some of our employees and not have them taken from another town and hopping around from town to town for, for pay. So. Um, some of those numbers, uh, again, there's a there's a document in your folder that uh, that has the numbers and the and the recommended amounts to do just that. Um, so, for example, our, our road foreman um, in 2022 was making was making 2448. Um, 2023, after his increase, so this fiscal year coming up, he'll be making 2645. So the average road foreman across the state right now. Um, based on 2021 dollars, uh, because that's the last survey that came out. Now, I just gave you his 2023. His 2021 dollars, the average is 3116 for a road superintendent. Mm -hmm. So ours is, falls a little bit short, obviously, mm -hmm. with his, even with his 2023 uh, wages. So we're recommending uh, um, using the ARPA funds, which this is a, a usable, allowable use for those, um, a five thousand uh, dollar retention incentive for him for fiscal year twenty three to bring him up closer to that average, um, keep him interested in being employed with us. I um, mean, it's similar. Um, the dollars are less, but it's it's similar for the other two men on the crew. Their retention incentive to get them there for fiscal year twenty three is about two thousand dollars. So we're talking a total of around nine thousand dollars, man. We're talking a total of exactly nine thousand dollars for the three crew members for a retention incentive this year, fiscal year twenty three. If we hire someone else, there's no point in, for the retention part. Then I take it. Correct. Correct. We would look at and agree on a appropriate starting wage um, that would fit within the scale. And then again, we're going to be talking about the 2024 budget very soon um, yeah. and look at making what it's going to cost to make those adjustments to bring them up without having to have a incentive, uh, uh, incentive bonus, retention bonus. Where were we at on those ARPA funds? Right now. Total? Yep, it's on my desk. Hold on. I can tell you <coughs> approximately uh, where we're at. So, let's see what <coughs> We have uh, allocated and spent about 63000 <coughs> and or spent. We have um, estimated that have not been approved yet around 50000 So it's, we're around $110,000 of approved or in the potential approval process for projects and expenditures right now. That doesn't include does not include what we just talked about yet. So I guess my question is where we're, and I, I can see your math, who, uh, 
And, and where did the uh, dollar figure come from? Is that is that unions? Or is yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From well, not me. Came from the League of Cities and Towns. Okay. From their survey uh, across the state of actual numbers. And the, the 2022 and 23 rates came from our actual budget numbers. Well, looking at these numbers, they're just knowing the industry and knowing what these guys do and running the equipment and stuff, those numbers are low. I mean, just knowing the industry. Yeah, I mean, we're getting challenged now, right, by the private sector. Mm -hmm. You know, FedEx, for example, they're looking to hire people to, with a, a CD, CDL license at 30 bucks an hour to drive the FedEx truck. Right? Those guys don't have to plow in the winter. They don't have to get up in the middle of the night and go cut trees out of the road. Um, so it's, it's a challenge. And again, it's not just us that's, that's struggling with it. It's, it's around the state. It seems like every time, you know, we just keep spending, spending, spending. And I, I, I am definitely in favor and would make a motion to... Uh, Do these retentive, uh, retention incentive bonuses to a road crew at the amounts that Mets has down there? Here a second. For, a friendly amendment. Uh, the uh, those bonuses could they be <laughs> spread out over fiscal year twenty three and only paid if they stay. That, for that, is the, that is the intent, right? It would be, yeah, I mean, you know, a certain portion yeah. every quarter. Every, well, every, quarter. every check, you know, yeah. every two weeks. It would be so, broke down every two weeks. So right. it, this, these monies would be... It's, okay. it's, it's, it will not be a one-time lump sum payment at okay. the start of the year. For <laughs> sure. I, I would like to... It would not be good practice. <laughs> I would like to amend the motion, uh, but to... Take the motion to the retention incentives to be broke and distributed as uh, Diane has explained. I would second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Town, uh, town clerk and assistant dis uh, clerk of discussion and decision. <clears throat> I think, um, I don't want to put you on the spot, Mr. Sawyer, but I think the, the point of that tonight was to have a, a brief discussion on uh, current events and the situation there. Um, I also believe we'll be having a, an executive session at the end of the meeting to discuss in further detail. As everybody knows, I, I made a post when I it became aware that uh, our appointment wanted to hire her daughter to fill in for the, the uh, assistant to town clerk position. In doing so, I, I reached out to residents asking for some input. Um, I personally don't feel that's the best decision that's going to serve the town of Berlin. And uh, I would like to uh, review some things with the board in executive session. Anything else on this? Can I ask a question about this? How many applicants were, were there for this assistant job work? I don't believe it was advertised. I believe it's supposed to be advertised, isn't it, that there's a vacancy? Yes. Yeah, um, again, the, the statute is the select board doesn't have to take any action until the resignation or the position becomes vacant, which mm -hmm. is going to be the 30th of this month. Right. Then they have 10 days um, to advertise the positions or position at that point in time in line with the statute. Okay. Yep. I did my homework today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I was correct. I didn't know I said that. Anyway. And just for clarity, as is, the town clerk has total control over who the assistant town clerk is? That's correct. That by statute. Is, by okay. statute. That is correct. Okay. 
Any other on this? I would love to hear what any concerns are amongst the board members. I, I personally met with you today and I told you what my opinion was and how I felt about that, that position being shared by your daughter, uh, be it that you can, if you were, well, right now you have been appointed, but if it was to remain an appointment that I felt it would not be in a professional manner, and I just don't, I personally do not feel that it's the right, it would serve the residents of Berlin uh, in the best manner. And that's not knowing your daughter's qualifications. I think that, uh, to do the due diligence, I think that, that there should be multiple people interviewed. I know it's a short period to do that in. Uh, and again, I, I shared my, my thoughts with you today on that. You and those too. Right. It was only your thoughts. I would really like to hear from each and every of the board members as far as any concerns that they have. Because I thought that was the point, was to have a public discussion about this. So I'm all ears. One of my big concerns, not that I'm saying it would happen, but having a um, having a, uh, a relative in the town clerk's office when you are a cash generating office, where are the checks and balances? Diane, tell us what happens if we take and do this with our audit? Oh, um, I think I know our auditors do look, they, yeah, they always ask me, are there any relatives working, you know, within, and they do ask me that every year. Of course, there's none, so it's, yeah. you know, and I, but they do frown on it, but I can't say exactly why, but they always ask me. That's one of the questions I'm asked as the auditor, uh, as the um, treasurer. Because they want to know if, like the like the road form, and for instance, if the son is working for him, or if in the police department or any of the public departments. Of course, the answer has always been no, so it's never been an issue. But I know it's safety problems, but that's what they told me. Well, I'm yeah. sorry. There's I, also I, a question. I would still love to hear from all yeah. of you before that gets interrupted. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make a new alert. There's a question in the back, oh. but we can go around first, unless this question pertains. Uh, no, you should go around and yeah. okay. have the board answer. Excellent. So mine, you know, very clearly, I think it's unprofessional to make the request. You know, I think highly of you and your skill set. But I, I didn't make a request for just so you know. So my understanding is that you sought to hire your daughter as the potential assistant when you went into the position of being the town clerk. That's my understanding, so that's why I worried it that way. If I was in the same shoes or trying to determine who was going to be my assistant, if I was moving you know, forward, I just consider it unprofessional. And that's the best way I can answer you. Um, and those are my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Carol? Well, because I know you, in this particular uh, instance, I, I would lean toward, well, you know, I know Corinne, so I don't, I don't think there's going to be an issue. But I definitely think that uh, nepotism is a dangerous road to go down, which is why I supported the change in the charter. And uh, I was going to use the same term as, as uh, our chair, as that. Uh, checks and balances in small town government. We need as many eyes with as few eyes as are available in a small office to uh, be scrutinizing it so that the voters and the townspeople can feel confident and secure in what's going on here. Joe? And I think, you know, taking you and your daughter out of the equation, I just think the position itself, um, I don't think family members should work in that capacity together because of the checks and balances. And it's nothing personal. Dave? I, 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 shared, this, I shared them and like I said, it's just my opinion and, and uh, I feel that it just needs to be some checks and balances and it's not that anything would ever happen 
I just want to make sure that the town residents are comfortable with the choices that we have made as a select board and or Corinne or whoever's in that position with the, the appointments they've made. Yeah. Okay. You got a question? Hi. No. Uh, my name is Sandra Ferber. I live on Airport Road. I'm a resident of Berlin since 2015. Before I was a resident in Berlin, I was a resident of Worcester. I was the elected treasurer and clerk for eight years. And once and after that, I was the appointed treasurer for the town of Callis. For four years, I'm retired. I just want to remind the board that um, this is a statutory right that the clerk has to appoint the assistant. And it's not a right, it's a requirement, number one. Uh, many town offices, particularly small offices, have had family members in the office. I can point to the town of Callis, where two sisters, one was a treasurer and one was the town clerk, uh, the Fitch sisters, Judith Robert and Donna Fitch, um, worked together for many years, and before that, uh, the town clerk and her sister worked in the office for many years. There was no wrongdoing. And I, I think, I, I just do want to say, because I think I know I, I, as a clerk and as a treasurer, I have been well served by the town office. It has always been professional. Corinne has been professional. Rosemary has been professional. I feel very confident that my records are maintained and that my taxes are paid and put to where they have to be. And I think I would urge the board to have confidence in this appointment and to have confidence in the assistant that Corinne appoints. In the end, the, the buck stops with Corinne. If there is a problem with the office, she stands for that problem. Um, so I'm really here in support of Corinne and to tell you that as a townsperson, I read your post, that I actually don't have a problem with it. And um, I think Corinne actually is very brave to have one of her kids work with her because that, you know, <laughs> I think she has a lot of faith in her daughter who is to do the right thing and to be, uh, uh, to serve this town. And um, I, I just, I am here to at least let you hear from a townsperson. I have many years of experience in municipal government. It's very important that people have confidence in, I believe it's very important that people have confidence in the folks at the office. And they, they really are the face of your town. Um, most people will know their town clerk and the assistant and the treasurer. They don't necessarily know the select board. We don't come. To, we don't call you up and say, my dog is missing, or, you know, I think my tax bill is wrong, or whatever. They, they go to these people, and I feel um, all of my interactions here in this town have been very positive. Uh, that's my husband over there, Buzz Ferber, and I, you know, I'm, I'm doing the uh, song and dance for us tonight, but I, I ask you to consider having some confidence in this situation. It, it feels, it doesn't feel very welcoming. And if the people don't like it, they will vote their feelings. And I think you need to trust in that. That's, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yes. I, I would like to speak in support of Bryn and Minda, who I know known for 18 years and she's smart as a whip she's the most organized person uh, I have a small business I started by myself and people were like we need more of your services could you please expand your business and not unless my husband wants to do it with me because I need someone I know has the same work ethic someone I know will show up won't call off, it's just the first sunny day and they wanna go, whatever. Um, so I work with my husband, we have a very successful business in Berlin and I 
I, I've worked as a justice of the peace for the last about 10 years. Minda works every um, election. You know, she cares about the town. She know. I'm, I'm not saying that anyone would be qualified. I'm saying if Corinne says Minda can do it, Minda's the right person. They can work together. They, yeah, I think that I would be thrilled as a town member to have Minda at assisting Corinne. Yes, sir. I heard the word checks and balances and as many eyes as possible many times in this discussion. And I know we're not specifically talking right now about the voting for the town clerk position, but exactly those words should be used for voting for the town clerk as opposed to appointment. A, an appointment from 10 sets of eyes um, for the town clerk. And if the people of the town don't like the decisions that Corinne make, they'll vote her out. Any other discussion? Print the day. <laughs> so is Minda. <laughs> I'm not sure about the decision part of this one, Ben. Uh, there, there, there is one at this point in time. It would just be to go into executive session or not. Okay. Any other discussion on this one? Hearing none, uh, approval of minutes and meeting. Of meetings for uh, April 4th and April 18th and April May 2nd and May 16th. The minutes from April 4th, um, I'll start with them. There's one section on page two at the bottom under the GMP right away permit. Moody subdivision review for approval. The second paragraph where it starts with the motion, there's that. some um, information there that needs to be parsed out and corrected. So yeah. I can't make a motion on that one yet until that's fixed and brought back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on the 18th, let me just take a quick look. There's just some minor grammatical issues on the 18th. I'd like to make a motion to approve them by giving Vince the hard copy and just asking for those changes to be made, mostly periods and just the inclusion of one additional word. So I'd like to make the motion to approve those as pre presented with just a few grammatical changes. You'll, you'll give me those? I'll yeah. give you that. Okay. Copy. I'll second that motion with the changes that flow specified. Any discussion? All That's those in, April 18th. April 18th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, May 2nd. Same thing with the May 2nd, just minor grammatical issues and I'll share the hard copy with Vince, but I make the motion to approve the Monday, May 2nd, 2022 minutes as presented with small grammatical errors throughout. Changes to be made. I'll second that motion also. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And May the 16th. On the May 16th, I make the motion to approve them with one addition being at the end what time the board adjourned the meeting because there's just a blank line there um, and also just minor grammatical uh, issues throughout, which I'll share with Vince Conti to be made. I'll start with that one. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22-26 for payroll from June 5th to June 18th, 2022 to be paid on June 22nd of this year in the amount of $51,725.51. Also the payable warrant 22G24 with checks 22066 to 
there a second? A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, round table for Nothing. Thank you. Carl. Yeah, I would just like to say one of the issues that I see and that I really was hoping to, to fix is uh, the cooperation between the town clerk and the town treasurer, and they get along very well by everybody's witness. I really felt like one assistant helping both offices would make so much sense. And I understand now that one's appointed, one's elected, and they're separate in, in that respect. But I still have a, a great desire to try to make those meet in the middle. And I also, one thing that's also been very clear is for decades, uh, there's been uh, a schism between the select board and town clerk's office. And there are probably good reasons, but I really hope that we could, we could overcome that. And I hope whatever happens today uh, doesn't throw a new monkey wrench in that relationship. That's my comment. Joe? Uh, um, I'm going to say a couple, a couple months back, actually, it was a different board. And I think there was uh, some sort of uh, idea of bringing different committees or board members or different departments in to report out. Much like today, when the fire department showed up to give uh, a brief overview. Uh, I think it's important that the police department, fire department, and road crew, all those different services and boards have a chance to come just to give a brief overview of what they're doing um, and, and answer any questions that we may have. Uh, or at least in their report, we could come up with some intelligent questions for them. Yeah. Love that. So I'd like, to that. See, I'd like to see those. Those You'd like those to come back? back? I'd like those to come back. Quarterly. Quarterly? That was going to be my whatever question. That, whatever that might be, and rotate them through so you're yeah. not having them all come in at the same. Easy enough to do. We can, just, we can do that. Put it as an agenda item. Yep. I'm giving each a few minutes on the agenda, once a quarter, one by one. We'll go through them all and then start over again. Anything else, Joe? Thank you. No. Dave? Mm -hmm. Brad, before you guys go into executive, I would really like you guys to keep in mind what you said repeatedly tonight, and that is everybody is having trouble hiring. Everybody. And in fact, you have decided to up the wages with, to, for the highway department, which that was brought up during budget time, and nobody really wanted to do it then, even though at that point there was a chance of somebody leaving, and I guess they decided not to. I don't know if it's the same person that did leave. Um, so the stuff that has been talked about as far as whether or not it's a livable wage and who all is available, and the bottom line being two people are needed in that office. There are three elections coming up, and they don't start in August. They start with the ballots going out. First day can be June 30th if the ballots are all here and things can go out. We already have the request for between 350 and 400 ballots to send out. The postcards went out from the state, and so people are starting to call to see, am I on that list already to get the absentee ballot? One person cannot do that. And I really don't have an interest in being that one person. Okay. Anything else? We executive session for personnel. Is there a motion? I make the motion to exit the regular select board meeting tonight, Monday, June 20th, and move into executive session to discuss personnel and contract. Second. Cool. 